Hello crafty friends, my name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. In today's video, I'm going to be making a rainbow theme card for a swap that I'm in. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on the subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. My friend Danny has a card swap group on Facebook and from time to time, I like to play along. Earlier this month, I shared the gnome card that I created for a swap. The picture is up on screen now. And today the card I'm going to create is for a rainbow swap. You know I love rainbows. Now unfortunately, Danny's group isn't open to new swappers, but you might be able to find something on split post stampers or a different Facebook group. Now if you happen to know of any open card swapping groups, why don't you leave those in a comment section below so others can find them if they're interested. For my card today, I'm going to be using a variety of products and I'm going to be doing a little watercoloring to make my rainbow. Now, as I get started on the process, I will tell you about the products and tools I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started by doing the watercoloring. So I got out my liquid watercolors, which I will list the individual colors in the description box below. I also got out a little palette, a pipette with some water in it, and kind of a wider brush for making my backgrounds. I did protect my surface with a plastic cutting mat, and I have a paper towel there to wipe my brush off when I clean it. I chose some scraps of watercolor paper that I had that would fit that largest rainbow and then for that little strip I will actually be making just a smaller piece with more of the colors together for the die cut word. Shortly before I made this card I had attended Virtual Stamp Joy and we used these watercolors for a couple of the cards so I was really in the mood to get a little bit more use out of those so that's what kind of inspired today's card. To get started I dropped I think one or two drops of the pink in my palette and then added some water with my pipette. Not really sure how many drops of water. Then with that brush I added some water to the top half of my first piece of watercolor cardstock and then I added dots of the pink ink on there. I kind of spread that around until it was mostly full and the rainbow it was big enough for that largest arc. Then I brought in my heat tool and dried that. Now before I move on to my next color, I did want to start the one for the word, so I added some to the skinny strip at the top of my workspace, and I went back in with kind of a drier brush and more of the pink on the piece that I would end up die cutting. I repeated this same process for the three remaining colors. The only real difference was is as the arcs that I needed to die cut got smaller, so did the area I painted. I did do most of this off screen and then I set these pieces to the side to dry while I moved on to other parts of the process. I wanted to create a sky to go behind my rainbow, so I got out some ocean mist ink from Gina K, my blue blending brush, a cloud stencil, and I'm going to be stenciling on to just a scrap of white cardstock. Now this stencil I have, I love the clouds on it, but it's not quite wide enough to go across a card when it's landscape. So what I do is I kind of ink blend the left half, making sure not to go too far over, and then I match one of the bumps up with one that I had just stenciled. I do this process to cover left to right, top to bottom on that piece of white cardstock. When this piece is full of clouds, I do remove the stencil and come in with a little light blue at the bottom of the piece as well. 
For my card front, I want to make it look like the rainbow is popping out of an opening on the piece we just stenciled. So I brought in my circle dies and I kind of figured out which circle would fit to have the rainbow come out of there. So once I figured that out, I took this off screen and die cut that. Now I did make sure to keep the cloudy circle that it cut out because I will be using that later on. My watercolor pieces had had time to dry completely, so I was going to do a little bit more die cutting before moving on. I cut the rainbow from each of the watercolored sections and the word rainbow from the other piece. Now I did end up cutting the shadow for rainbow from vellum and I think I cut the word rainbow once from the watercolor piece and maybe one more time from just regular white cardstock and I did adhere those together just for a little added dimension and a little extra strength for that word. Then I played with the placement of each of the rainbow arcs and to hold them in place temporarily I used some scotch removable tape. Once I did have those where I wanted them I used some art glitter glue in my fine tip glue bottle and adhered all of the arcs down. Once those were all in place, I added adhesive to the back of the word rainbow and got that place onto the vellum shadow. I like how using the vellum you can still see what's behind it, but it helps that word pop out from the background. I gave these pieces some time to dry and then I brought in my Misty to stamp the first part of the sentiment which I chose sending you A. Now I probably should have stamped this before I added the rainbow just in case something goes wrong but I crossed my fingers and decided to go for it. To make sure my sentiment is kind of straight across I did bring in this quilting grid which was a suggestion from my friend Danny. I lined up my stamp and now what I can do is stamp it right onto that grid and see how straight the sentiment looks. I thought it looks pretty good after that first one so I went ahead and inked it up and stamped it onto my cloud piece and luckily it came out perfect. Now I'm going to start building the shaker. Off camera I cut two squares of thin clear cardstock that would fit behind that circle opening. One of them I had adhered behind the rainbow and the opening with some liquid glue and I used a stamp block to help me press that down and hold it in place while it dried. Off camera I cut and folded a card base and I added some foam tape to the back of my shaker piece making sure that I did have an area around that opening that was completely sealed off. Then I brought back in my cloud circle and I got that place behind the window so it looked like it flowed correctly. Now to get this onto the card base I temporarily tacked that down with some scotch removable tape then I added liquid glue to the back of the circle. After that was on there I placed it onto the card base doing my best to center everything and once I did have that centered I kind of pressed down on the window where the cloud circle was and then I carefully peeled that up and I held the circle in place. Not that it was necessary but I did go ahead and remove the two pieces of tape that I had tacked that down with. Now it's time to get that shaker filled up so I brought in some small sequins and that second piece of clear cardstock. I pulled back the release paper from about half of the back of my ink blended piece and then I got that second piece of clear cardstock put in place. I snuck a little bit of an opening at the top, maybe I should have left a little bit more of the blue release paper on there, but because my sequin container has that corner, I was able to just get that right in there and dump in my sequins. I finished pulling off that release paper and then I used some liquid glue on top of all the foam tape and the areas that now had plastic. This liquid glue will give me a little bit of wiggle room as I get that placed right above the cloud circle that's on the card front already. 
to finish the card off, I got my rainbow word put on the front with some liquid glue. I did try to hide it as best as possible behind the die cut word. And then I added some sequins to the front of the card just to kind of bring them outside of that shaker. I put down five dots of glue, let that get a little bit tacky, and then added a sequin to each. Then on the inside of the card, I added some of the leftover arcs and I added my personal stamp to the back. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this shaker card for the upcoming rainbow card swap. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.